Hi, it's Chloe from Queen of Marks, and this is How to Cato Poly Clay. <laughs> Today we merged two processes, working with molds and working with polymer clays. Collision course. Hey everybody, just full disclosure, um, I did get in contact and do my due diligence by getting in contact with the manufacturer about some of these products, uh, finding out whether or not um, they can go in an oven once cured, finding out what the flash points are um, and what heat, what is the highest heat to, to leave it in the oven for and for how long. So I have done my due diligence. You should also do that. I would not suggest that you just arbitrarily take any of your uh, silicone molds and, and put them in the oven at 300 for however long you leave your uh, product in there for. Call the manufacturer, find out you know, what the product's flash point is. Is it oven safe? How long can you leave it in for? Do all of that before you can proceed with this. Um, also, it's a great idea to have a dedicated uh, oven for the baking because the I use uh, Mold Star 15 and it's a little flexible and you will see um, in some of the shots where I did um, spill a little bit of uh, liquid polymer clay uh, onto my oven so you don't want that in your in your regular oven. So now that we've gotten that over with I'm excited to show this to you and I hope you enjoy. Hi, it's Chloe from Queen of Arts, and today I'm going to show you how I bake liquid polymer clay in a silicone mold. So we're going to be using Donna Cato's liquid polymer clay, and um, it bakes at between 300 and 350 degrees. Um, I'm using my oven. You could probably use a um, like a heat gun, but I, I don't use that because I'd like to be hands off. Um, in my silicone mold, we're going to fill all these crevices. I'm going to add a little bit of pigment, and uh, as you can see, I'm using a lot of polymer clay. <laughs> like that's a lot. Um, liquid polymer clay is a thermoset material, and there I'm going to add some pigment. Yeah, it's a thermoset material, material um, very much like a resin, like epoxy resin. So. You know, you mix in your pigment and you, you know, take your silicone mold and you ma just make sure that you get all of the crevices. Um, it probably does not degas, but you will probably see some, uh, some bubbles rising to the top. And as the Kato um, bakes in the oven, it, it will release more bubbles. The one thing that you'll find is that um, when you see the actual uh, end result, you will see those bubbles in mid-rise um, as the clay cooks, because it, it does. Now I did speed this up, so um, it did take a little while, not, not too long. I just You just want to make sure that all the crevices are all filled. Um, you might want to tap your uh, mold a little bit, just to make sure it shakes all the way down to the bottom. So when I made this mold, what I did was um, I created the design on Adobe Illustrator and uh, printed it out. And then what I used was the Sculpey Pink Sculptor's Sculpey and, um, and just filled in the blanks um, all around. Um, and, and I just, you know, put a bounding box around it and poured the, uh, this is a smooth ons, um, mold star 15 uh, and just filled that up and um when it set it sat in i think it was i, I want to say half an hour to two hours something like that it's very quick so when after it set um pulled everything off and uh, and this is what i got was this pumpkin And it was fantastic. But now the one thing is, is that there were like little bubbles or holes in the uh, the silicone material. So when you use this or reuse it for any sort of other medium, whether it be polymer clay, whether it be, um, you know, fa fast cast polyurethane, whether it be two-part epoxy, 
your end result is only going to be as good as your mold, right? Now I put, um, I set the, I preheated this oven uh, to, for 300 to 300 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, uh, but um, sometimes I put it in a, a few minutes before, which is, I think is fine. Um, but here you can see where I, I put it in the oven and I dropped a little bit of uh, liquid clay. The, um, the actual mold is a little bit flexible. 300 and I'm baking it yeah so it is it does get a little bit um, it is a little bit more flexible than some of the other um, silicone you know molds that are out there that are oven safe um, I decided to do it to use what I had because I just wanted to experiment and see whether you know what the results would be so you can see what it looks like here in um, in this photo. Um, as it, when it came out of the oven, it does look a little bit, um, you know, like crystallized or something. It's just a it's a very interesting look. Uh, the al alcohol ink got nice and dark, which is lovely. Um, but if you look closely, you can see that it's it's like little bubbles in and around the edge, little bubbles within. Um, I don't know if that's because it's a combination of alcohol, ink, or whether that's, you know what I mean, just um, being in the mold. Um, but all in all, when you look at the actual, when you once you demold it, um, it doesn't look that bad. Again, it's going to come out um, as good as your mold is. So with my mold, um, there were a little bit of, you know, scratches and things like that. But I mean, you know, that's art. Art's in the eye of the beholder. Now here's one that I did um, with pan pastels. I am so excited about this product because A, I'm not allergic to it. And um, it actually, I don't know if you can see it in this picture, but it actually came out a bit more clear, clearly, uh, with less bubbling. And um, I just whipped it up. I mean, I, you know, I took some of the pan pastel, I scraped some off in a cup, and I just whipped it, you know. Um, I didn't pay special attention to making sure it wasn't, you know, everything was nice and uh, had been dissolved completely or anything like that. I just wanted, to, again, just testing to see what it was. And even still, even still, with like little bits in there, it still came out a lot clearer. There wasn't that crystallization. So I have to think that what happened in the with the green one was the um, was the alcohol links for sure. Now here's one I did with um, just regular Cato poly clay, and uh, again started it started it up by um, putting it in the, uh, the rice cooker, warming it up at 120, and uh, then I rolled it out and conditioned it. And what I did was I pushed it into the mold, and if you look um, probably closer to the middle, you'll see some cracks and things. That's from pushing it in to the mold, right? I mean, there are better ways to do it, but again, experimentation, right? But it almost looks really sinister. It almost looks like a, like an evil pumpkin mask or something like that. And so that's pretty awesome. So there you go. You can put silicone um, into the oven. Uh, depending on the type of silicone that you um, and and I cook it at 300 and got some fabulous results uh, would be interesting to find out what else I can do uh, with my silicone molds but um, for now collision course worlds collided and we all lived through it